Hello! So in this video I wanted to show you how to use Python to work with chess databases. If you missed the last video I go over how to set up the libraries we're using in this one and some basics on the chess library in Python. Um, so please check that out first if any of this is confusing otherwise uh, let's get started. So yeah we're going to be using games from Lee Chess. If you haven't heard of Lee Chess it's this really cool open source kind of chess website and they make a lot of things you know, free to download, free to use. And there's one database that we'll be using called the LeeChess Elite Database put together by a LeeChess user. And it's very handy for finding a lot of games to work with and to analyze. So you can see the history goes back to June 2020 and these games are all, what is it here? So um, it looks like all standard games um, with players rated 2400 plus against players rated 2200 plus. So, you know, pretty high skill players. If you wanted to analyze your own player and you're not as good as at chess, kind of like me, I'm more of a maybe 1200 to 1400 ELO player, you could use the database at leechess.org to get those games. But we're just going to start with the experts because presumably they're, they're up there with the best. So here we go, here's imports from last time, importing that chess library, and then importing Stockfish. Stockfish is that AI chess program that will tell us how good the current position is and give us recommendations on next moves. And we are going to set up two Stockfishes for this. We're going to have a good Stockfish and then a, a bad one that doesn't really think too far ahead and isn't very skilled at chess. And that'll be helpful with some of our analytics on figuring out blunders and, and things that a human might see, but a computer would do very well. Some more imports here, and here's sort of the gist of it. Um, you just download one of those files from the LeechS Elite database. It'll be a zip file, and then you can unzip it, put it in the data folder under this repo in this in this notebook. So it'll be Python chess forward slash data, and then put it in there. So I'm using the March 2022 games. And this right here, we're just going to load the file and then turn it into something a little bit simpler for Python. I won't run this now because it takes about 10 minutes, but rest assured it does work. Um, I did create this CSV before. So here we go. Here is our CSV. All right, so in the PGN file format, we have headers. And that sort of depends on whoever created the database. They could put anything in there. And then I've also extracted the moves. That way it'll be a little easier to have us work with Stockfish. And we have, you know, quite a lot of games here. So first up, we're just going to convert these fields to the Python equivalents. When we loaded them from the CSV, the, uh, this dictionary here is treated as a string, and this list is treated as a string too, so we just are going to run the eval command to turn those into the proper Python forms. And while that's loading, just look down here at the stored output. Here's everything that's under the headers field. So we have, you know, what's the type of game, what day it was played, who played it, what the result was, and then some more very, you know, useful information like ELOs, what opening was used, and the uh, time control. Also, this LeechS URL is pretty nice because if we want to go to a game and then set it to a given move number, all we have to do is do the pound sign and then say, like, move 10. And that'll open the game to that position, which is very handy. And that's what I use behind Chessinit, the website I talked about last time, where you can see given chess positions and how good the position is for white or black. Right, back to this. So we've loaded games, pulling up this game here. And I'm just going through and picking out some variables I like. There's lots of ways to do this. You could use this pandas JSON normalize field to sort of do it automatically. It's just the field names are a little funky that way. So for now, I'm just going to do it manually, and we're getting the, the game ID, the ECO is the opening score, and then we'll also get the opening text here, and a few other things that are self-explanatory. Okay, so we got our game, so we got all these extra metrics. So now if I wanted to go to this LeechS game, I can just use the LeechS ID field, and, you know, boom, I'm there. We also have openings, and see here, one thing I noticed when I was working on this before, the text did not load right from the CSV. And it's likely just in the CSV, not in that PGN format. But there is a handy Python library to deal with encoding issues like this, where you have like a squiggly A and some nonsense. 
just run fdfy fix encoding. And that's installed as part of requirements.txt in this repo. Now, if you did run the first tutorial without, or before I created this tutorial, you won't have those requirements. So if that happens, just run this pip install fdfy. And that will do it for you in Jupyter. So I've already got that installed. So here we can just fix the opening name by running that command, just apply it as the function. And boom, now we got Grunfield's defense looking good. Also, with data extraction, it's good to validate things that you've done. So this right here just shows that, hey, white score is correctly um, 0 for a loss, 0.5 for a tie, and 1 for a win. So that sort of checks out. Now, one cool thing we can do real quick, now that we have all the data in Python-friendly format, is just look at the correlation of winning. So I'm just running in here. Uh, I was, I was Googling, I found this point by serial correlation that seems to correlate with the uh, Pearson correlation. Not very good word choice there, correlating the correlation with another correlation. But anyways, uh, people did recommend using this point by serial for uh, more categorical variables. So like a zero and a one are two categories, but a continuous variable would be, uh, you know, like a, a number that can take up any value, like the real numbers. So in this case, we have a weak correlation, but it's pretty strong by p-value. Now, I think ahead of time we can know that someone with a higher rating should do better. So it's pretty safe to assume that's true, but um, you know it might not be the same correlation at all skill levels. Maybe the very skilled are you know, more correlated, but in the middle brackets there's more randomness based on how, how fast someone's learning or something, and that correlation could be worse, just a conjecture there. But uh, yeah, we can at least see um, correlation does make sense here. I put some notes in there you can read if you go through this. So next up, the, the main interesting part is running a game and using Stockfish to analyze it and create some additional metrics that wouldn't be possible with you know, just the CSV. So we have our scores. These are standard scores in chess. People will say a pawn is worth one point, a bishop three, a knight three, rook five, queen nine. That's a you know, pretty standard thing to do as a good approximation of position advantage. Now what we're going to do is we're going to compare the taken pieces from sort of a naive analysis to what Stockfish says to see what the true position is because sometimes that, that piece is already gone before it's taken and that's when the deciding moment was in the game. And it's very interesting to find those key points in analyzing your own games or trying to understand others. This logic here is going to play on the chessboard up into a given move number. So this is saying play until move number three, and we're pushing this standard algebraic notation. So that's san, just do it here. So san, e4, d5. Notice if you ever played chess before, you can also write like x, d5, but if you just have positions moving, a computer will know everything it needs to know to move that piece there and take whatever was on that square. So we have e4, d5, that means that presumably black played d5, and then the next move was, uh, uh, you know, white taking that piece. Okay, so now we're going to go through and we're going to analyze the board at a given move number and make that into a function that we can then use to, you know, evaluate how the stockfish evaluation has changed over time. So this is, it should be pretty self-explanatory. This is the, the piece from last time, that cell just above this. Invalid is useful in case the PGN has bad data. It looks like Leeches, I didn't see this filled ever, but they do have information on positions being funky. So these are two things that a chessboard will tell you, hey, these moves don't make sense or something weird happened here. So, you know, maybe promotions are a special case that make things a little tougher to, to analyze and same with the board outcome. Yeah, and a valid especially is bad because if someone promotes a pawn to a queen, the taken pieces won't match up correctly because we sort of substituted a piece and I don't have that logic in here. So any games with invalid you probably don't want to, to use there. Also summing the taken score, that's just going to add up all the pieces and turn it into centipawns. That's why this is times 100. So one pawn is worth 100 centipawns. Fen is a, a way you can easily tell Stockfish what the game state is. 
and then we're also storing the URL. And let's move. So here we go, run this, and we get you know move number, what was taken, and all this inf interesting information. And like I mentioned before, we can look at this URL, just depend on the move number with that pound sign, and we go right to the move. Here's Stockfish, or here's Leeches, and there's Stockfish right in this browser that we can then run to compare against our local Stockfish. So they're saying a Stockfish with a depth of 27 is estimating this at you know, minus 2.7 it appears. And our Stockfish is saying this position is minus 2.92, so 2.92. And that means Black has an advantage by almost a bishop at this point in the game. And you know the values are pretty close. Sometimes Stockfish does some things behind the scenes that are random. So um, you might not always get the exact same results. Okay. And here's where I think it, it gets really interesting when we look at the Stockfish evaluation over time. And you can sort of peek ahead. This is what it looks like. There's the taken score here. And then there is the evaluation score. So this is a good stockfish is the orange line and we can see around move 15 that it dipped. So that's when white first lost a little bit of an advantage. It wasn't too bad, but then it really got cemented uh, over here. And notice this is a line chart, but I'm going to rerun this with a bar chart just so it gets a little simpler to look at the moves because Matplotlib tried to, you know, do some funny stuff, turning things into a float when we want an integer. Okay. So now clearly we can see move number 19 is where, where something happened. That's when the evaluation really changed and there was a blunder. And move 15 would be more of an inaccuracy or mistake, but nothing too dramatic. You know, it's within uh, half to, to one pawn in terms of value, and white didn't lose their advantage. Okay, so now I want to look at this and compare a smart player you know, very, very good stockfish that's like Magnus Carlsen or, you know, the best of the best trying to play even better than them versus a more naive, dumb stockfish. And we'll look at those two scores over time and see if there's anything interesting there. So same stuff. I added a new helper function, play board. This way, if we want to look at the board at a given move state, it's a lot easier than trying to pull it out of this function that was doing too much. So I just added this smart dumb to it and it'll return that extra information. Here we go. So now we got our smart evaluation and our dumb evaluation. So it's kind of interesting. They're very different here. And we did set the look ahead for, for Stockfish on the dumb side uh, to just three. And the skill level was lower, I believe, too. So that's why the taken score and the dumb evaluation are very close. But the smart one knows there's an issue. And if we look at this at the exact position we are looking at, 20, in the board state, we can see that black is now, I don't know what the correct term is here. Um, oh man, I should know. But, uh, you know, queen, if it moves, bishop can still take the rook. So that's sort of like a two-point advantage. And if there's any positional stuff at play, then black has something else too. And that's what Stockfish says. So, you know, three versus five, that's a net two, but there's a little bit extra. That's why it's an extra 0.92 here, or 92 cent fonts. And uh, yeah, so that's a little surprising, but it's, you know, it's interesting that the computer got it wrong. So let's do the same thing, except play out all the moves now. And then we can look at the, the plot of smart first dumb and see where the other turning points may be. And again, this is running, but you can see below, I've already run this. And the dumb evaluation is actually really dumb. And it thinks it was winning a lot. And then it thought it was losing really bad on that one mistake that happened at move 15. And then, you know, it's a little crazy. But we do notice that it, it correctly found 19 as the key point. So that's 1 before 20, you know, so we're, we're going to pull up that position here. You know, what happened at move 19. And while that's running, I'll just show you. Down here, we can see that white castled and did a queen set or a king side castle. And that changes the position quite a lot. And because this was a fast game, it looks like white missed that this bishop move was open. That pinned the, or not pinned, but, you know, sort of lasered the queen and the rook. So that was the deciding point of the game. We can also look at move 24. We go back here, we can see that the dumb evaluation thought, hey, this is, this is actually great for white. So we'll try to figure out what it was thinking there. And we can see 
Okay, here's the queen, and you know, why did the dumb stockfish actually think this was a good position? And you know, I couldn't really tell, I had an idea, but you know, nothing looks that great here for white, so maybe dumb stockfish is just too dumb. But then with stockfish, we can just ask it what it sees, and it'll tell us what, what it's thinking. So play board, set the moves to the, the move number we're looking at here, and then just get the evaluation and get the best move. So we have that very strong advantage for white estimated by moving f4 to e3. And you look at that, it's like, okay, let's, I guess, you know, you could take the knight and then maybe follow up with the white knight to take the pawn if, if black takes, but, you know, it's not really a smart move at all. And if we look at the other top moves here, we see that um, nothing looks that great. That's, you know, something with f4, it's thinking is good, but maybe it's a little too chaotic too. Now the center pawn's at 74. So we need to let stockfish think a little harder maybe in our, in our dumb stockfish version for, for analyzing things. But yeah, this is just a quick run through. I wanted to show you how to run stockfish on a sword python game. It should be pretty straightforward for you to extend this to all the games. And then you can also create some additional logic to generate these series and analyze the, the lines to pull out, you know, all the best turning points in a game. And then you can analyze those and try to see how that compares to different styles of AI. Just some ideas I had to analyze. A few other ideas here. Um, so I mentioned detecting deciding points in the game. That's here. You could also analyze skill level and the correlation with, you know, blunders or openings. Maybe expert players are okay doing a Scandinavian attack or an English opening. But if you're not very good at chess, maybe something like the Italian opening is, is a little bit easier to do. And that's something you could analyze and totally figure out. Um, what else here? That's pretty good. I'm trying to think. Oh, and also you could create your own chess engine. Maybe you're trying to beat your friends but make it look like you're not cheating. You could use the Stockfish get top moves to, to figure that out. You could also create more fun AIs, like a very conservative one that doesn't like uh, doing any anything too risky. Um, you could define risky. One idea I had is to say this move is risky if a piece takes another piece in a trade with different values say a bishop for two pawns. That's a common attack that you can get into sometimes. And it's a more aggressive sharp style play. Or play. So anytime you see a piece taking something that you know isn't immediately compensated back, that's aggressive. And you could teach an AI to try to pick those positions over the optimal one by looking at top moves and sort of classifying them. But yeah, I hope this gives you some ideas. Maybe you can come up with your own portfolio project or use this to, you know, create something really cool. Thanks for watching, and as always, these are on my GitHub, Roger Fitz Tutorials. I'll put a link in the description below, and you can use that to download this notebook, get installed, or look at my other tutorials. Thanks again.